Well, we've got a woman in the studio with us who certainly knows how to multitask, and she is considered one of the most powerful women in New York. She is the CEO of Prudential Douglas Elliman, one of the premier real estate firms in New York City, and she made it in this lousy weather today. Welcome to the Lisa Wexler Show, Dottie Herman. Oh, thanks, Lisa. I'm so thrilled to be here. I almost thought I wasn't going to make it because uh, the city was pretty bad and the car services were running so late. I can't believe they did that. But they must, they did a good job because I really got here quickly. I even emailed you that I probably would be late. Incredible, incredible. And also, I forgot to mention, Dottie Herman, that you are you and I are colleagues. You have a very popular radio show on Saturday mornings on WOR AM 710. Yes. I, I can't I say it's my favorite station because this one would be upset, but let let me just say, it's a very popular station on my dial. I listen to it quite a bit. I love WOR. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> show, and I love doing it. But I see you. You are, like, terrific. I was supposed to be on your show two years ago. I remember. I didn't even do radio. I remember. I, you so. know, some things get... Met, we met at the Friars Club. Yes, we met at the Friars Club. Uh, we were our members. I met your whole family, mm-hmm. and it was like I knew them for... I, I felt like I knew them for a million years. That's because we have the same background. And, and, yeah. and, and a lot of that sort of shows through. When you meet people, I don't know exactly how old you are. We're relatively of the same age and generation, I'm assuming. And Baby you grew over. Exactly. And you grew up a couple of towns away from me yes. on Long Island. Yeah, on Long Island. Yeah. Which we're worried about. We just heard from that Nassau County. I don't know. The state's taking it over or something like that. I heard that, too, in a headline this morning, but I don't have any details on that. I'm not even sure what that means. Does that mean Andrew Cuomo decided, you know, sua sponte on his own that he was going to take it over? I don't even know what that means. No, How I, can they do that? I think their budgets. I mean, I think that they're in, I, mean, I think that they've spent too much money. Yeah. And but, I guess, you know... But who's the they? I mean, Albany is not exactly what you call fiscally responsible. No, but I guess they have to make a poster child. I mean, I that, guess, I guess so. that's probably what it is. I guess they have to set an example and they picked on Nassau County. I'll tell you, the real estate tax rates locally are horrendous in Nassau County. Considering the postage stamp plot of land that you get, the rate that people pay. I can't believe it. My, um, I can't believe my Aunt Cookie is still in Hewlett. And she has, you know, maybe like a quarter acre lot. Maybe. Like maybe. If maybe. Maybe, maybe 50 by 100, maybe not. I think she pays something like 15000 a year in yeah. property taxes. It's a big problem. It's a big problem. And you know something? No pain, no gain. I think you have to address it. And it's really not really being addressed. It just get, And, of course, being the real estate business, it certainly hurts values because, you know, real estate, you know, the total the number, it makes the payments a lot higher. So it, it's really uh, gotten to a point where it's a little bit much too high. It so. is. I think the local real estate taxes are insane. And, in fact, the, I just got the notice that the assessments, because they do them every five years in Connecticut, which is another huge rip off. It used to be every 10 and then they made it every five. And it's another way for, in my view, for the states to sort of gouge money because when the real estate market was growing, growing, they didn't want to wait 10 years. They wanted to get more and more money. Well, now they've gone down, but what they're going to do is they're not really going to decrease my real estate taxes. They're just going to raise the mill rate. So they're going to, get an, uh, they're going to have a, a lower value, but the number's going to be the same. I guess they have to raise money, however they can That's get it. That's what they have to do. They have to do it so that they can plow our streets. So in the meantime, Daddy Herman, thank you very much for being on our panel. You're going to be at the Women in Power panel in I'm just a while. I'm very excited to be on that. You know, I really, I'm really, it's an honor, and I was so afraid I wasn't going to get up here, so I'm, I'm glad, and I'm glad everyone's doing it. Oh, yeah, everyone's doing it. You listen, we're stalwart Connecticut Yankees here, not one person even. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, this is clearly not my family, you know, because my family, in fact, my family canceled, They were, but they were supposed to slept from the island. They were all supposed to come and they said, Lisa, I'm not sure we can make that two, two and a half hour drive. And I understood totally. Yeah, I know. So yeah. we're going to talk a little bit about the art of the sale, but I'd like to get to know you because you are now somebody at the pinnacle of your field. Give us a little bit of insight how you got there. You know, sometimes, Lisa, when I think about how I got there or I speak about entrepreneurship, I, I sometimes have to say it sounds almost like a it just it just sounds like science fiction it's 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 really a great story it's a uh basically i don't want to say a cinderella story but i my mom died in a a really bad car accident when i was 10 i was the oldest of three children and uh so you know when you have a tragedy like that i don't think you understand how that impacts you at that age but it certainly does and i had no one to really Watch me. My father was pretty sick. He was uh, 
pretty badly injured. So I kind of uh, grew up and, you know, I didn't have anyone as nurturing. So I just kind of did things that probably I wouldn't have let my own daughter do. And I just became overnight an adult. You know, and it just happens. And so I, you know, people ask me, do you think that that had some impact on uh, your success? And I think that I was always an achiever, but I always just did things because I didn't really have anybody there telling me when to do them, how to do them, what time to come home, you know, to do my homework. And so I, I'm sure it had some impact. I'm sorry about your mother. No, you? well, you know something, I mean, of course, it's a, it's a horrible thing, but you know, sometimes uh, hardship can bring, you know, or can bring people together or can bring them further apart. And I have to tell you that I have the closest family. Uh, we all had to count on each other. And I always want to give back because from when I was a little girl, all my neighbors and some of the school teachers and everybody's mother was kind of my mother. And nobody did it for any recognition. They didn't do it for money. They didn't do it for glory. They did it just because they were great people. Yeah, so they cared about you. Yeah. And they and so I've always I've never forgotten got that. So I always try to do what I can. And when somebody says to me, oh, how can I pay you back for that favor? I say, you know what? Don't the way you pay me back is do it for somebody else. Yeah, the and pay it forward thing. Yeah. And the that's circle exactly goes around. True. So Are you the, um, do you have brother and a sister? Or? I have a brother and a sister. My brother is a, a couple of years. I tell them, I like to say he's my older brother, but he's a little bit younger than me. And then I have a younger sister. And, uh, you know, I just. Uh, so I ended up getting, I ended up, you know, growing up, going to college, getting married when I was fairly young. I had a daughter when I was very young, so I left college. I had to go back at night, got divorced, and uh, at the time I thought, well, you know, you have to make a lot of money because you. I was 23 years old, and I said, you know, you, I want to meet a, a nice guy, and I don't want to be on welfare, so I'm just going to have to make a lot of money. And that was like, I didn't think about it. Sometimes when you're young, you just don't really think about what you can't do. You know, it just was like, okay, so I'm going to make a lot of money. And I said, uh, not that I don't like men, but I said, I, I don't ever want to count on a man because at that time, women really didn't have a lot of rights. So I couldn't get child support for my daughter. And when you'd get interviewed, people would ask you, you know, if you fooled around and there was nothing you could do. You're that kidding wasn't, me. No, it was, it's a hard, it's hard to think about that today because people would be so sued. But it was really that kind of time. So I said, now I'm going to do something that's so great that I'm so good at that I'm never going to have to count on anybody again. And um, that's a little you know, bit of Scarlett O'Hara. Yeah. And speaking of Scarlett O'Hara, that is my favorite character. Matter of fact, on Halloween one year, I went as Scarlett O'Hara. I went to the rent a costume in Mineola. Rented a Scarlett O'Hara costume, and I loved it so much that I didn't return it. So when the late payments... Oh, God. Was, so it, made of, was it made of green velvet drapes? Green velvet <laughs> with the long gloves. I still have it. I never... I, I kept it. I paid the late fees and kept it. So, oh, so it's a I good love story. that movie. I love that movie. So that's just so because I remember that because in the middle of the inter intermission, it's, you know, I'll never be hungry again. That's it. So that's as I'm listening to you, I'm, I'm hearing Scarlett O'Hara. Right. Yeah. And she loved real estate. Remember? Of course Tara. she loved real estate. And she didn't depend on men. No, nope, no. Nope. Nope. Tara, that's right. It all came back to Tara. But it's funny because, you know, I don't think when I first saw that movie, I realized, but as I watched that movie a million times. I saw it in the Green Acre Shopping Center, which is pretty close to where you grew up. Yeah. That's where I saw Gone with wow. the Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> They even had a drive-in around there. Too, they did. <laughs> they did. They had the drive-in right next door, but I didn't go to the drive-in. I went to the regular movie yeah. theater. And, of course, it was in reruns at that point. You know, like a re... Um, you know, once in a while, like they do now with The Sound of Music, they just decided to re-release it. And it was the only movie I can recall that really had the intermission, you know, because it was such a long movie. But I saw it without commercials on the big screen. It had a huge impact. Right. And she was gorgeous. And oh. you know what? Didn't realize it at the time, but obviously there was a woman who really had to be strong. She wasn't so strong. Everyone thought she was so strong, right. but it was everybody who was weak around her. That's exactly right. And she had to rise to the occasion. And, um, you know, I think that if you're healthy, because I think that that obviously, and you really want to do something and you have, 
I think that's really what a lot was about. You just can't give up. I always say when there's obstacles, because life is a lot of obstacles, and I think it's kind of just how we handle them. I wanted, to, to, I wanted to ask you particularly in real estate, because the people, I'm surrounded, by the way, by a family that's always had their real estate license. I, I know. Even, I met your aunt. That's okay, you met my book. aunt. <laughs> she told me she I, I, I have my broker's license, which I've never used, but I keep, and I have. My sister has her salesman's license. Everybody in the family has a license, and my husband started as a commercial realtor for Jones Lang Wooten. That's how oh. we support. That's how we got our house. So we're all we all sort of know about real estate. I'm curious from you. You're such a pro. Do you ever accept no for an answer? In other words, is it is it a tenacious and tenacious? And is that really the secret of your success? Well. Yeah, I I don't I don't want to say I never say no, but no. When I want to do something, and again, I probably don't do anything I can't really be great at because I can never be average at what I do. I don't like average. I can be aspiring. I could be like on the bottom trying to get better. That's why I don't play golf because I don't have time to practice and. I would have to really practice to even get somewhat good, and I can't just go out and say, okay, I'm just going to do this. Okay, so it's not your nature. So you like to excel. I like to excel. I like to achieve, but I also know from a, a, a very young age, and I learned a lesson because when I was in my 20s, I worked for Merrill Lynch, and uh, they had opened a real estate company across the country, and about... And I, w- I had a big job with them, and uh, about five years into the job, they said, we're selling. You know, it was the public company, so it was all over the papers that they were selling the real estate, and they wanted to divest from real estate. And there went my job, and I was to stay with the company until they sold it. They ended up selling it to Prudential. And um, I'll never forget it. I went to the meeting and Prudential said, listen, we don't want to own any real estate company across the country. So we're going to sell it to uh, we're going to break up the country and sell the northeast region, the Midwest, the West Coast. And your job is to keep the company until we deliver it to another seller. Well. I was that naive because sometimes, and it's wonderful to be young when you don't know what you can't do. That is true. Okay, so I was like, well, you know what? I I love this job. I don't want to lose it. So I started calling banks to see if I could borrow money to bar- buy a company. And, of course, I didn't even know what the price would be, but um, the banks laughed in my face. Of course. Um, they said, we wouldn't even lend you the money for one office. So I then was talking, saying, what am I going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not going to have a job. I love this job. And somebody said to me, oh, why don't you just buy the company? Just send them a letter to, to Prudential and buy the company. And to make a long story short, I wrote Prudential a letter, said I have the money, which I didn't. And I ended you up didn't? Buying- See, now that's the piece. You said that you had the money even though you didn't. I didn't. So what made you decide that you could have the chutzpah to say that you had the money? Well, because I was young. Yeah, but I mean, you just assumed that somebody would end up giving you the money. Yeah, you the I was money, going around you talking, you know, to people. And I wrote them a letter saying I had venture capitalists when I really didn't. And to make a long story short, uh, I ended up buying the Long Island Company, which was 26 offices, no money down. No money down. No money down for $9 million. And so a uh, note. No, no. Well, I had notes, but I wasn't personal because I couldn't pay That's back. That's what I mean, but the price was a note. Yeah. Yeah. And then I borrowed a million seven in working capital. Unbelievable. Um, and... And you did it. Yeah, it sounds impossible, but it happened. But it happened. When we are sitting next to Dottie Herman, whose favorite character in fiction is Scarlett O'Hara, but her story in its own right is quite inspirational. And it was wonderful to hear how it is that you managed to have the guts and the chutzpah to say, I can purchase this company rather than be fired. I think I'll become the owner. Well, as I said, you know, I don't know that I would be that brazen now, but but why not? That's but you know what I I have a uh, I really believe that most people don't try because they're afraid of failing, and I have a saying in my office, and it says failure is success turned inside out, and to be successful, you have to be able to fail. 
I know you learn more from your mistakes very often yeah, anyway than your successes. Yeah, it's really failing. I don't know anyone who's successful that never failed. Yeah. And you just have to get back on your feet, and when there's obstacles, you just have to figure out a way around them. And I get very angry when people say, oh, that person didn't make it. Well, at least they tried, you know. And so being very young at that time, I, you know. I wasn't afraid of failing, and I ended up buying a company, which was impossible. When I talk about it now, I think it was impossible. <laughs> and then um, I ended up buying Long Island. I built up the Hamptons. And then right after 9-11, I went back to Prudential, who lent me the money initially, and I said, I want to buy Manhattan. And they said, well... It's being bombed. You know, we just had a terrorist attack. We were on orange alert, red alert. I said, if they blow up Manhattan, I'll have a sign Hamptons that way. Uh, uh, it would be so. I then borrowed another seventy-two million dollars with that's myself. That's a big loan. Yes, and uh, I brought in my partner Howard, uh, and he helped finance it too. And we bought Manhattan about nine months after nine eleven, and. Uh, who knew the market went crazy? So, you know, sometimes timing is, you know, you can't. Timing is very, yeah. But, yeah. and you know, Manhattan's a perennial. It has occasional dips, but it's, there's only one. There's only one New York City. And uh, I know that now. So, and do you great. live in New York yourself? Well, I, can, I, I have an apartment in New York City because I have to say that I, I work a lot of hours so I can, but I'm from Long Island myself. I have a house out in the island. You do. Mm-hmm. And your daughter, is she, she grown and. She's, um, on Long Island. She was in the city, but now she has a baby. I, I'm a grandma now. Congratulations. I, I, to to. I love it, but it sounds old. No, it doesn't. And, um, doesn't, doesn't sound uh, old. But uh, so she's still on Long Island. Yeah. yeah. And is she going in real estate too, like her mom? She has everyone, my family the same way. Everybody everyone has, their, has license. their license, but my daughter's a teacher. It's a rite of passage. You have she to get your real very, estate license. Yeah. So everybody has their real estate license, but she's a New York City teacher, so she's off today, actually. Do you think real estate is still a good way to make a living? I think it's a rough profession. I think it's tough. I think it's hard. But I do think it's one of the last f- frontiers where you can actually build a business with very little money uh, and really build and make more. I mean, I have people that are in like, their 20s that make over a million Two million dollars. Really? And yeah. is it residential, commercial? We are primarily residential. We do some commercial, but mostly residential. And of course, you know, in the city, the numbers are big. They are. They are. If you um, practice where the numbers are big, you're going to make more money. And then, of course, because of the co-ops and the... It's true. You know, the you know people need to be navigated through the board packages, so... They need the help yeah, of a good realtor. They really do. No question about it.